Alrighty, guys, welcome back. Today is November 15th, day 319 out of our GC365 Bible reading. My name is Shay. I am the intern for middle school and high school, and I have my dad here with me. Dad, what's your name? David. All right. David, my name. <laughs> I sure do. Uh, well, today in my family, it's actually pretty mm -hmm. special. Um, do you remember what we were doing 20 years ago? Yeah, indeed I do. So 20 years ago, um, we were actually meeting mm -hmm. for the first time in a social worker's office because I was about to be one of their foster kids uh, and then leading up to adoption. So that's pretty cool for us. So we, mm -hmm. this today, uh, dove into Ezekiel, Hebrews, Psalms, and of course, Proverbs. Um, I know you got a little bit more out of Ezekiel 31. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to get, kind of dive into that for me? Sure. So, I mean, uh, you know, Ezekiel is kind of an interesting book. Um, and, you know, I had to read it a couple of times to really um, get all the nuggets out of it. Oh, but, me too. Yeah. But, you know, basically Egypt, right? Egypt was uh, about to fail. Um, and uh, they were very, uh, this is a time in their history where they were, you know, they were arrogant and, um, you know, they were disobedient. They were engaged in all forms of idolatry. And um, God was about to punish them in chapter 32. Yeah. Um, but in 31, you know, the theme that I walked away with was that, you know, we need to flee to God for our ultimate protection. Um, that any security that a creature can give on this in this world uh, I've often heard it likened to like the shadow of a tree um, it's scanty and the and the protection is very very weak and temporal you know so we need to flee to God for protection you know for our ultimate safety and for security so in general that's the that's the theme yeah. of chapter 31 yeah for 32 for me uh, very much Egypt became arrogant and disloyal to God and kind of reverting back to their ways uh, before becoming Christians, before coming follow, becoming followers of Christ, of adultery, mm -hmm. idolization, and any anything that you shouldn't be doing as a Christian, they were right. probably doing. And God was right. then talking about punishing them and telling them mm -hmm. that they're going to fall, but I'm also going to raise your enemies up above you because of that. Right. Right. So, I mean, I think what the, the theme there is that, you know, the wicked, they seem to flourish, right? They mm -hmm. seem to prosper. And we see that in the world around us, right? Often the wicked always, often seem to be the ones that are wealthy and they have all the opportunities and they have all the fame. Um, but we know that as Christians, that that's very temporal and that passes away. And then they're left with nothing, right? And um, I think that's what the message that God was trying to show the Egyptians in 32 is that through their arrogance, their disobedience, their idolatry, and their love of self, um, that God was going to show them that that was, um, uh, he was going to punish that. And um, that that's not going to um, be lasting for them. Yeah. Yeah. And then the biggest thing they were he was punishing them for is they were basically just refusing God as a whole almost. Right. Right. By reverting back to their old ways. That's right. And then we move on to Hebrews uh chapter twelve, verses mm -hmm. fourteen through twenty nine. I personally highlighted verse fourteen that says, Make every effort to live in peace with mm -hmm. everyone and be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And then, it, like, for me, it's, we can't be more holy by trying harder because God already did all of that for us. Jesus paid the price of our sins and thereby placed us in a position of acceptance before God. We're not necessarily an equal, but we're considered royalty in his eyes. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, the other piece I think that I got out of that that passage is that we need to um, run to our pain in our lives because we're only going to learn through going through trials. 
Um, and we need to, we need to run to that. You know, uh, one analogy that I, that I stumbled across was God wants us to be squeezed so we can produce wine and not wine as in, yeah, you know, exactly. Uh, complain. So, I mean, I think that that's really sums up that whole passage um, that we need to grow, we need to learn to grow through our trials, um, and that life, and oft, well, often those trials and life in general becomes the ultimate classroom experience for our, for our faith, yeah. and for our, our um, maturity in Christ. And it it helps us then welcome mm-hmm. discipline and having a disciplined right. life, because that also brings us closer to God. I wanted to quickly jump over. I was reading. Um, C.S. Lewis today. I'm going to quickly pull that up. I thought that was a really good quote. He said, God who foresaw your tribulation has specially armed you to go through it, not without pain, but without stain. I thought that was really neat. Uh, It actually came up today as sort of a a feed, and I thought that really applied to uh, this particular passage. I think so, too. Mm -hmm. And then God... uh the word refuse is used a lot in Hebrews and it indicates the rejection of God's message. It can be passive. It can be active. It can also be deliberate or even just casual. You can Mm -hmm. deliberately just say, God, I don't need you, whatever. Bye. Or it can just be casual and almost subconscious of you don't realize you're doing it, but that's also, I think just as dangerous and just as serious. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then verse 27 talks about nothing can be shaken. So nothing right. eternal and nothing under God can be shaken because mm-hmm. he is the firm foundation mm-hmm. of everything. Yep. Always remember that when we take on his strength, that's what helps us to produce our ultimate joy, right? Yeah. Not our conditions, not our unfulfilled desires. Right, is taking on His strength. So that's where we need to find our pure joy in our in our life and in our relationship with Him. Speaking of joy, Psalms one thirteen, mm-hmm. chapters one thirteen and one fourteen is just a huge declaration of praise to God that's and just right. saying He needs to be exalted above all mm-hmm. else and praised in everything. That's right, and. It goes, I thought it was just so awesome that he says he's going to exalt the poor Mm -hmm. and lift the needy. But he doesn't just say that. He says he's going to put them in a place of royalty among princes and the princes of his land. Right. So I just think that's so awesome is he's got, he sees us as royalty. He sees us as princes and princesses which I think all of your little young ones will Mm -hmm. think is so cool Mm -hmm. because who doesn't want to be a princess? That's right. What we need to remember is that, you know, um, you know, let's not let our current circumstances or, you know, um, how we feel about ourselves in this, in this world dictate God's ultimate love for us. And, um, that, um, you know, God, uh, you know, loves us so much that, um, you know, he's going to raise us up and when, uh, when the time comes and, and our circumstances on this planet are, are temporal at best. So you know, don't let that really drive, you know, how you feel about yourself and your, your relationship with God. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So I always like reading the Proverbs out loud just cause they're so short and, but they're so meaningful Sometimes short and sweet is more impactful than just a an entire book in certain times. So we had Proverbs 27, 18 through 20. It says, the one who guards a fig tree will eat its fruit and whoever protects their master will be honored. As water reflects the face, so one's life reflects the heart. Death and destruction are never satisfied and neither are human eyes. So you said mm. something really awesome about mm. the fig tree and kind of what it symbolized, at least for you. Sure. Well, it has to do with really making investments in things that are eternal. Um, and uh, when we do that, we're going to reap the rewards and the benefits of that. Maybe not in this life, but certainly the afterlife. And um, 
you know, my mother-in-law, your grandma used to say, I forget how it goes exactly, but only what's, uh, what is it? Only what's done for Christ will last. I can't remember the whole saying. I remember, I remember part of it. Yeah. Only, only what's done for Christ will last. That's like really all you need. Right. So, I mean, and that's really about the fig tree. It's, it's, uh, making those investments in things that have eternal significance and, um, when, when the time is right, we'll be able to reap those rewards. Yeah. Yeah. And then verse 19 talks about reflect the face and then one's life reflects your heart. Right. So it just goes to show a mirror is going to show what you look like to the world, but your actions are going to show your love for God, That's or at right. least it should. Yeah. And then death and destruction are never satisfied and neither are human eyes basically saying nothing on this war mm -hmm. on this earth and nothing, whether it be social media, um, even just the food on earth, um, cars, what have you clothing, whatever you desire the most in the world is nothing compared to what's to come and what is waiting for us with Jesus in heaven. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite verses, and I think should be the capstone verse of every Christian, and it's Matthew's 20, Matthew 25, 21. You know, it basically says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. And I think that ties really nicely with uh, Proverbs 27, verse 18. And that ultimately should be our goal as Christians, right? Yeah. I mean, we want God to be able to say those words to us. When we're standing in front of him. Because I know for me, I want people to just look at me and just see the light of God and right. see, oh, yes, she loves Jesus. Mm -hmm. she, I want to be around her because I want to have that same joy in my heart That's radiating right. throughout my life. Yep, absolutely. All righty. Well, that kind of wraps up our reading of today. Again, this was day 319, November 15th. We hope you're keeping up to date. And even mm -hmm. if you're not, just start all over again. It's never too late to start the right. one-year Bible. And we're actually so close to the end of the year and so close to being done. There's less than 50 days. I think mm -hmm. that's so crazy. Well, we hope you have a great rest of your week and rest of your month. We hope to see you again the rest of this week.